To those of you wondering what the Foo Fighters have to do with the Elves of Thetis, the answer to that is absolutely nothing. I just wanted to record this episode in my pyjamas. So often when I record one of these videos, I find that for the first few sentences I'm very stiff and don't have the energy that I think I should. So as an experiment, I'm going to try and have as much energy as possible for the first paragraph, just to see if that doesn't affect the rest of the video. Let me know what you guys think. Right, so in Dragon Age, there are these things called elves, right? Long ears, slender bodies, never heard of them before. New concept by Bioware. How the fuck do they do it? And they can be split up into three different groups. Ancient, City, and Dalish. And today, we're going to go over all three, starting with number A. Also, if you're daring enough in this video, take a shot every time I say the word elf. I promise the coma won't be permanent. I can't be held liable for that, right? So the ancient elves were the immortal and dominant race of Thetis, with magic being second nature to them. But this only went on for an unknown amount of time until their great city of Arlathan fell. Afterwards, the inhabitants of Tevinter came along, pillaged the city, and enslaved the elven people for generations. During this time of slavery, the elves' culture and detailed history was lost to time, and the elven people even began to forget their heritage and identity. After a holy crusade was fought against the country of Tevinter, the elves were mostly freed from their slavery, and they were able to try and rebuild in a place called the Dales. This was until a few hundred years later when a crusade was fought against the elves, and they were left homeless once again. Jesus, these guys and their holy crusades. It's a good thing that never happened in real life, huh? Fuck. After this happened, the elves split into two groups, the Dalish and the City Elves. We'll be talking about the City Elves next. City Elves are elves that live in human cities. Really, City Elves live in cities. What will they think of next? They're forced to live in these closed-off communities called alienages, and they're largely ignored by the general populace and treated poorly by those in power, sometimes to a disturbing degree. Take this little elven wench here. So young and vulnerable. Alright buddy, thanks for making the decision as to whether or not to kill you incredibly fucking easy. They are looked upon as second class citizens and most of the time, by law, they can't get a decent job. Which means that they have to take the worst paying job possible or sell themselves back into slavery just to survive. But depending on the city that the elf finds himself in, their conditions might be a little bit better. For example, the elves in Orlea are usually servants to noble families and are usually given their own quarters and treated quite well. But no matter where you find yourself, you'll always be a second-class citizen, because as I said in my last video, My god, we're assholes. Yeah, we're assholes. That's not to say that it's all bad, because in the alienage, they're usually a very closely knit community, which means that you're surrounded by family and those that care about you, which is more that can be said about some people in the Dragon Age games. God, I'm sorry, I'm taking these ears off. I'm sorry. I'll replace it with something else. Okay, so face painting's a little bit harder than I thought, but I've already committed, so we're just gonna be like this for the rest of the video. Hope you guys are okay with that. I mean, it looks similar, right? Yeah, you guys are right, that looks fucking awful. What am I doing? The Dalish Elves are very close to what everyone's basic idea of an elf is, that is, living in the forests and being very in touch with nature. Dalish Elves are very unique in terms of appearance because they mark their faces with tattoos to honor their gods, and these tattoos are known as Valisleen, and are very often made from the blood of the person about to receive it. It is used as a coming-of-age ritual, and while getting the tattoo, the elf in question must sit in complete silence. If they show any signs of pain or flinch during the very long procedure, the leader of the clan might deem them unworthy, and might push back their tattoo until they deem them worthy once again. In Dalish clans, until you get your face tattoo, you're basically looked upon as a child, which means if you have a low tolerance for pain and can't go through with the procedure for many, many years, you could be getting treated as a child by those many years your junior. How do you do, fellow kids? Fuck off, kid. Dalish clans are only made up of a couple of dozen elves at a time, and they don't stay in one place for too long, usually moving to avoid being detected by humans or to find a more suitable location. They move using land ships known as Aravels, and it makes me so angry that we've never seen them in motion or been able to ride them because they look so fucking cool. They move these land ships using these majestic and elegant creatures known as Hulla, but they're only really majestic and elegant when I'm not recording them trying to go over a tree root. Each clan is usually led by something known as a Keeper, which is an elven mage who has the most knowledge when it comes to their lost history. Their task is to find more knowledge and keep their clan safe from anything that might threaten them, such as wildlife, Templars, the Chantry, humans, sometimes even dwarves. My god, a lot of people want to kill Dalish clans. So this fucking idiot right here, this fucking guy, forgot to record the entirety of the rest of the script. Which means I have nothing else to show you. But the next video will be about the dwarves, and I'll be able to tell you basically everything about them, except for everything that happens in this DLC. Thank you guys so much for watching.